Hello everyone, I'm Mr. Mokalover, and thank you for joining me here at the beginning of a new campaign in Fiverrike, Legacy of the Great War 0.3.3. Cool. Um, it's been a long time since I've actually played Fiverrike, and as you can tell from the thumbnail, we're playing as a certain country, a 51st state type of country, but let's go with some custom game rules. Uh, I'm not going to strengthen anybody, war goals, anything in interesting here that I need to do. AI behavior. Ooh. Britain is randomized. I like the randomized idea. Italy? Hmm. You know what? Let's go with nationalists for fun. Japan? Democracy. You know what? We really want a war-torn nation. Let the military take over. Or war-torn world, really. The Soviet Union? I'm gonna... I, I don't know what path they go, so leave it random. And, um... Germany, we'll see them in just a little bit. And game setup, I'm not going to do that. Cool. And historical AI is off. And we shall begin playing as the USA. Now, I will warn you, within this campaign, we might see Germany go a little crazy. But let's first of all review the military, because that's all we can do. Look at that great description. And, oh, 105 days. Oh, that hurts me. Oh, why do we have to do that in 105 days? Why? Why? Anyways, uh, back to normal gameplay stuff. Construction 1. Uh, for land doctrine, I'm not going to go mass assaults. Oh, actually. No. Grand battle plan. Uh, I don't really feel like it. Mobile warfare would be bad. Uh, before we make a decision, tanks aren't great. They're not bad. You know what? Mm, tanks. Do I focus on tanks early? Let's focus on tanks early. You know why? Because even though I could research other stuff, I might go with Mobile Warfare Doctrine, actually. As much as I love Superior Firepower, I've gone down that path quite a bit, so let's just go ahead and go Mobile Warfare. I like that. Why not? Try something different. And, of course, oh my god, oh, the naval screen. Uh, it's, uh, the United States, so many ships. But at least this is not me trying to do United States Vanilla Man the Guns campaign that I did when the DLC dropped, so I actually know relatively what I need to do for these ships. I'm not even going to tell them where to deploy because that's a waste of time in my opinion right now. Because I'm just going to put all those ships together. Cool. We're going to need some great war tanks eventually. Just go ahead and grab one of those bad boys. We're going to need interwar fighters. I'm not going to bother with close air support. Naval bombers will be important. Carrier naval bombers will be kind of important. Interwar bombers are going to be important, but focus more on guns. There you go. Uh, factories. Now... It's been so long since I've played Ferrarich that I don't exactly remember what happens. Now, I have set in motion a few things that I haven't told you yet. Oh yeah, we have that stuff going. What do we need? Infantry divisions. That's actually not bad. That's pretty good. I like that. National guards. Disgusting. Uh, do that. Do that. Give me like... There you go. Looks good to me. Deploy you in Richmond because... Why not? Garrisons look pretty bad, to be honest, and cavalry isn't great. We have a total of 24 divisions led by Mark Clark. Hello, Mark Clark. And they should, he shall be led by MacArthur Eisenhower. He's pretty good on the attack. He is politically connected, which isn't bad, but so is Eisenhower. But he already has a less logistics. And I'll go with MacArthur. I almost... I, usually, I don't think I usually choose MacArthur. Um, however... Many of you will just become Coast Guards. So, I'm not going to even bother with you. You've got to love the beginning of any USA campaign where you have to spend some time building or making sure you know where everyone is going. Level 2. I want someone level 1. That's kind of garbage. You're politically connected. Joseph Stillwell, thank you for playing. Cool. Alright. San Juan. Hello, San Juan. We still need Panama. And yes, I will deal with the garrisons, or not garrisons, the ships soon enough. But we'll deal with our ships as soon as we need to. For example, once I start with the time going on, because that's a huge chunk of time that needs to be taken care of. Oh, we have so many Pacific Islands. But I think we could use more. Wait, New Zealand? We share some islands with New Zealand? That's kind of cool. Um, as you can tell, I'm not guarding the American coastline. Doubt I will really need to, but you never know. Ah, oh, Virginia, you're still normal. Ah, oh, Virginia. What a weird place. Um, do Texas. Ah, uh, Texas is split. 
Yeah, if you're right, it's a really weird mod where we own, the Americans own, Baja California. But regardless, we need 37 divisions. Let's go ahead and tell um, you guys. I can't make any more. Okay. Well, whatever. Oh, wait. Go ahead and deploy to Nolens. Thank you. All right there. Beautiful. And the rest of you guys. Do we have any airplanes? A couple, yes, we do. And a couple carriers. That's not bad. These carriers, not great, but whatever. Scrap them. Let's let time go on. And if you're like alpha, build 0 0.3.0. .0. You can read that. I'm not going to read that. It's still an alpha, but thank you for everything. And I'm going to read all news events. Well... We'll at least see them. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll read them, maybe I won't. Uh, oh, Guam Garrison. You're still level 6. You go down there. Oh, wait, you're militias. Um, I really don't care for militias. But I'm going to keep them there anyways. I'll train them. I'll switch them over. So we've got 6 divisions here, including 1 cavalry division, which is not terrible. No, that's not, that's not terrible at all. I want all of you, though, to be in Washington to train the entire time as we let time go on and read a little bit about the lore of I almost said Kaiserreich, Federreich. So we have Indian Rebellion of 1935. Perhaps the Empire was not as strong as people suspect. During the later weeks of 1935, widespread rioting took place in several important Indian cities following the refusal of the British administration to reform working conditions and raise pay throughout the British India continent. And that's pretty much all I'm going to read because India, like in any good starting game of Federreich, is on fire. Oh my god. Oh. The state of old glory. Since its inception, America's relation with the foreign invention has been troubled and muddied, to say the least, for the past couple decades. The world has changed so drastically, and the U.S.'s relation with the major powers of the world has been greatly strained, with the recent dissolution of the Bull Moose Party back into the Republican Party. The legacy of the late Theodore Teddy Roosevelt has been called into question after his main political opponent, Woodrow Wilson, was forced out of the presidential race in 1912, issued a heart attack following a heart attack. Roosevelt was barely able to win at the ballot boxes, ushering in a new and expansionist philosophy to the American zeitgeist. Not least on his radar was a brewing tides of war in Europe, which he was determined to keep the country out of, choosing to focus on the neighbors. This was rendered impossible, however, when Mexican nationalist Victor Carranza took power in Mexico and became a formidable southern force. Brought to arms by the Americans' recent occupation of Veracruz and Tampico affair, he mobilized the army not for the offense, but to defend the country. As for the Mexican Revolution wound down, a new war would start and Germany would be the match that would light the tinderbox. Kaboom! The Zimmerman Declaration was decoded almost as quickly by American spies as Mexican ones, and what may have initially been swept aside as was instead cast as a move to war, and neither side was going to back down what began on 18th of February 1917 in Mexico, where the stroke of Roosevelt's pen would not end until 11th 19, November 1919 in Germany, and hundreds of thousands of American casualties would prove America's place in the Entente's victory. While at the Treaty of Marseille, President Roosevelt would try to convince the powers of the world to agree to his 10 points. Hmm, I wonder what that is. A document that would enforce a moderate peace and hopefully a new faction of democracies from America itself to France to even Japan. It's failure, though and Roosevelt's consequent infuriation at the insolence and disregard of Sir Lloyd George and George Clemenceau would bring him to declare, declare after leaving the conference not to trust the Allies nor the Germans, for it seems that it is solely America's duty to protect itself and its interests. From then on, aside from the trade as usual, the U.S.'s diplomacy with Europe went very cold. The country became focused solely on its conquered neighbor to the south, installing a puppet regime in more than a few watchful eyes after the death of Theodore only a couple short months after the war. Uh, or later, the U.S. would be on the rise for nearly a decade, a combination of war profiteering and exploitation of the new Mexican puppet state. Presidents John J. Pershing, a renowned war hero, and Calvin Coolidge and Herbert Hoover have passed in succession, the election of 1928 being particularly heated between Hoover and incumbent son Quentin Roosevelt. Now 1936 has come, and the political scene has been largely shaped by a horrendous downturn of 1929, known as Gilded Tuesday, that has nearly ruined America's economy in the, pa in the panic, though. The Mexican Rep Republic was declared, which was decidedly an autocracy, and the Republic of the Philippines, which was more accurate to its name, of course. This Great Depression, though, is the name of the game in American politics, and with the next election sure to dispose Herbert Hoover, four choices rally uh, support to bring a new look or to both domestic and foreign policy, and with the rise of the far right and the left since the end of the Great War, you know, where the United States will find itself... It may have never been in a more precarious situation than now. But God bless America. Jesus Christ, that was long. Praise, praise the Lord and let's keep going on. Oh, what is going on in the Reich? Well, for Deutsches Reich, they're in the Stahlpack, led by Dresser. Dresser? Dressler. Oh, 
Oh, I did not want to forget. Republican Spain exists. And they're the only Spanish faction that we kind of like. Um. Hmm. Hmm. What if I were to send a few bad boys over there? Would anyone object? Probably not. You know, America intervening in foreign wars never happens. Um, how many planes can I send you? I'm not really sure. Oh, 100. Oh, that's kind of nice. Uh, go up to 50. And do we have any fighters? Fighters, naval bombers. Oh, yeah, we do. Cool. Awesome. Thank you for showing up, guys. Hopefully the Republicans Spanish don't fall. We, but we have panic in Houston and explosion rocketed Houston, Texas this morning, causing several deaths and a currently untold number of injuries. Chief suspects of the incident include Mexican nationalists, though local police have not yet ruled out a domestic political group either. Included at the scene is what officers have been identifying as the flag of the Mexican state, though additional forensic research will have to be concluded. Conducted. The target of the attack is believed to be a rail and transportation hub, even though there's that's misspelled, in the city, but exactly which is not yet known either. What is known, though, is that the political climate in the country has taken a drastic turn for the worse, and it will certainly go only downhill from here. Oh my gosh, my political power. Oh, why? Why? Mexico, or the domestic terrorists. Why? Why do you do this to me? Alright, and concerning the Navy, give me all you guys. This is how I deal with the American Navy. I'm just going to shove them all together. Thank you. And I will strip them down and tell them all go to Norfolk where we will have a great time with each other. Cool. Are you guys here yet? No. Um, a peaceful ending at midnight. George V. King George V is dead. A new king? Perhaps... A new empire? Ooh. Very nice, very nice. Ah, the U.S. Army is in a dire need of reform, though. L lack of clear leadership and generally poor maintenance during the interwar has accumulated in a somewhat backwash army for our nation. The recent adoption of the Pedersen rifle has further put a strain on the military's budget to make matters worse today, though. We must make a choice concerning the future of the U.S. Army. A handful of generals have put forward propositions, but only three of them stand out. First, we got Eisenhower's plan. It outlines a large cleanup of leadership and rigorous training to bring the army up to standards. Second is Patton's plan, which outlines an overhaul of the composition of our military to transition to a highly mobile, mobile fighting force. MacArthur's plan outlines bolstering the size of the army, even advocating different forms of mobilization. But who's going to lead? Now, this is important because this is part of reviewing the military. So, reviewing the U.S. military. Should we go with Eisenhower's plan? With, so, but he focuses on grand battle plan, which we don't care about. We get more land for construction speed, more division organization, more planning speed, and max planning. Some blueprints for artillery, less division attrition and support tech, and then more organization and planning speed. Or do we go with Patton, which we did go down mobile warfare. We get a bonus for mobile warfare, endless offensives for less defense, but more attack and recovery rate. Bonus to motorized, bonus to armor, bonus to rocket artillery, which I never use. Field hospitals, that's kind of nice. Bonus to producing trucks and infantry equipment, and bonus to mobile warfare. But we're going to go with MacArthur's mass mobilization for mass assault adoption, which I did not go under. We get a lot of Pedersons, which isn't bad. Uh, reorganized logistics, which is really good for supply, which I like. An army marches on its stomach, which we remove malnourished populace, which I really like. We can desegregate the military for more manpower. Guns over butter, which we lose civilian factories for military factories. We get a bonus to electronics research or signal companies. And then we get a bonus to nuclear technology. What I want to do, we've chosen mobile warfare, but I want to get rid of malnourished populace because it hurts our population factor, it hurts our stability and training time. And I'm an American, and if we can't eat good, what's the point of living? So we are definitely, absolutely going for MacArthur. He's got the right of it. If the American boys are hungry, why, what's the point of living? You know, we, you gotta eat. You gotta have a lot of food. Let's see, all right. Field Marshal, do we need a new Field Marshal? He is politically connected, but it's only 10% minus. And it gives you more attack. Just go ahead and throw on Eisenhower here. That's fine with me. Um, we're completely surrounded on every single side, which isn't ideal, so I might just position you here to maybe take out the Phalangists, I believe. Phalangist Spain. 
Right now, we do have air superiority. We are doing a little bit of damage there. I don't have enough command power to uh, put more ground crews. So be it. Whatever. Um, let you guys get on the front line. Hold. Get your organization and strength up. I want more army XP. Oh, we need so many guns. Oh my goodness. I didn't realize we need more guns. We need a little bit of support equipment and artillery. Guns, 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 guns. Maybe we should have made all this. That's okay, though. Ah, the assassination is Abdul Mesid II on January 13th. Killed by an unknown assailant. Well, sorry about your life, man. I guess it happens. Oh, and here we can maybe get a little bit more air XP. Almost. We only have 26% stability. There we go. And then 39% war support, which is kind of weird, but okay. I'll take it. If you could help attack, could you help win the battle? We do have air supports. We're led by Jose Miaja. Very nice. And we have more than enough fuel, which means all my ships are almost here. I'm going to wait for these guys to get all back up together. While we're waiting, just go ahead and train. I don't really care. Just give me that naval XP. 0.74 a day. That's beautiful. Oh, yeah. Give me that naval XP. Don't expand too far, Republic in Spain. You only have so many, you know, divisions. Oh, and the French Republic is here. I keep forgetting that the French Republic is not communist or not too far left. They're social conservatives. Eh? Yeah. Whatever. The U.S. Navy isn't in a very good shape either, though. The failure of the 1928 Navy expansion program caused naval enthusiasm to wane and the further downsizing of the U.S. Navy forces. A Troika is founded in the Soviet Union. Trotsky was exiled. Oh, cool. Anyways, um, and after the Great Depression hit, it basically... We couldn't keep up the maintenance of the Navy or even expand it. If we're to reassert our naval strength, however, we're going to need to expand or reform our Navy. We could attempt to make our Navy carrier base. Alternatively, though, we could focus on what we've always been capable of, strength in numbers. Well, just because you have a lot doesn't mean it's good. I want quality. Strength in numbers, fleet and being. I'll uh, get some destroyers, battle cruisers. I don't really use battle cruisers too much. Battleships, naval doctrine. Ooh, marine research. Transports. Um, in sky and water base strike. Hmm. I really want to go down this path, but we have it, it's optimal for us to go down here. So let's go strength the numbers. Sounds good to me. And yes, and I haven't told you yet, but I guess I'll spill the beans. I am using the Valkyrie sub mod for Fear Reich because I have never used it before. So Dressler is out. We have Libertarians in Germany. With the anti Valkischer Rotter Kampfverbund. They're probably left libertarians. And Germany is in flames. Popular insurrection. And the army storms Berlin. How disappointing. But I've never seen this happen before. So this will be new to you and me. Well, maybe at least to me. Maybe not you. But that'd be cool if it was too. Um, you know what? You might as well help out. I'm okay with that. Sure, we don't have a lot of guns. We don't have a lot of stuff. Period. Oh, you know what? Guys. Go ahead and stop training. Don't want to hurt my levels of equipment. We can win right there, probably. There you go. Oh, we all left. Oh, good, 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 good. Awesome. Look at all that naval XP. It's so good. So we have Estado de Mexico down here. Uh, review the... Oh, they're Valkists. Review the economy. Military corruption, good. Basta, that's... Uh, militias, good. They have militias... And rapid industrialization, that's not bad. That's not great, though. They have minus 50% recruitable population, even though we are suffering not very... We're not doing very really well ourselves right now, though. All right, anything else? Come on, guys, just keep producing those garbage ships. All right. Can we focus on the Navy just a little bit now? Yes, yes, good, good, good. Um, Give me all your subs. I always separate my subs away from this. Put much someone new. Just even make a new theater. Subbies. Cool. You will be led by... And with this campaign, I'm going to try to keep an eye... Ooh, Harold. Let's do that. Uh, oh, oh. There we go. We got a lot of things to read now. Because he... I'm going to keep an eye on this stuff. Oh, we can actually do this already. Visibility. Minesweeper. Mine layer. Oh, I want concealment expert. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait. Screen smoke specials. Nice. That's really good. So, the death of Eugene Debs. Early this morning... 
Eugene Debs died of multiple organ failures following an extended period of ailing health. Thank God. Debs had an extensive history in American politics, having been a union leader who contested Theodore Roosevelt's election campaigns in 1916 and 1912 to less than stellar results. After nearly been found innocent of sedition and his condemnation of American actions against Mexico, and by extension to central powers, by the Supreme Court, he continued to be a controversial figure. Debs also contested the 1920 presidential election on the Socialist Party ticket, but was again very unsuccessful. While he remained the de facto leader of the Socialist Party, he discontinued his runs for president from then on, and the Socialist Party has stagnated ever since in the major margin of American politics. He appointed some weeks ago some unknown journalist and union nurse named Jack Reed, who cares about him as a successor, though with Debs' death, the transition has become, of course, official. Many spectators cannot say exactly what the fate of the party will be now, but it will probably suffer division in power following its suzerain's leader's death. Oh, it becomes a libertarian. Jack Reed does. Those the United States Air Force. It's been lagging behind other air forces, notably those in Europe. The British and French air forces dwarf ours, which raises a set of red flags. We need to decide on how to prioritize for the USAF. We could prioritize bombers after all after to destroy the enemy's industry, of course, which will bring the war machine to a grinding halt. On the other hand, we can focus on attempting to get the USAF to work with the army by supporting them in combat. Um, I almost never choose enemy industry. Just help out the army, which is really kind of weird to say, just because it's 1936, and I know this is kind of a divergent timeline, but I don't remember us having an air force, like an actual official air force until the end of World War II, like 1947 or so. But we have a strange interregnum. Oh, China, Fengxing Governancy, was shot dead by Japanese loyalists under the banner of the Concordia Association. The Chinese update, successful negotiations in India, the rebels had shown promise by taking the initiative in the fighting against the British control of the subcontinent, and while Britain has, sh has since shipped large quantities of troops to the region to crush re revolt, the rebellion has continued to live on. Uh, but what does the stock market say? Oh my goodness, China, you're looking weird, and we have the Russian Republic there too. China, 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 China. Hey, Japanese backing, Zili clique. This sounds familiar, this is the Zili clique. This has Wu Pai Fu here as well. Hmm, this sounds a little familiar. Oh, the Beijing government. Ah, oh, Wu Pai Fu. The Beijing government led by the Zhang Council. Union integration. Libertarian support. So much libertarianism in this game, this mod. At least my campaign right now. But let's keep going on. We, we don't have enough uh, naval XP yet. Oh, the Mountain Republic. That's something I've not seen in a very long time against... Under Saeed Shamil. Alright, cool. So we got a couple things done. Review the military. Um, Oh, they're reviewing... Oh, the Pol I clicked on the Polish people? Oh. Oh, Germany, Germany, Germany. Purging the army. That's always good to do. Purge the army. Um, MacArthur's mass mobilization. I want to do the elections eventually. Um, anything that will really help us out right now? That's pretty good. Combat unit destruction, fighter detection, air support mission efficiency, and air superiority. Pretty nice. Uh, strength in numbers, expand the Navy. The Navy will be okay for now. Let's go and do MacArthur's mass mobilization. The last argument came from MacArthur. His argument was that while tactics are good and speed is effective, America has a major advantage over most, most other nations, that being the incredible population that the vast nation contains. If we mobilize enough men, it does not matter who we are fighting, enough bullets will silence them. You can have your bullets, but I prefer my bombs drop from the sky. Like, yeah, artillery is great, tanks are great, but I like those machines in the sky quite a bit. Oh, and I keep forgetting that we are actually very, very involved in here. Um, are we getting attacked? Because I, I would like to help us out no matter where we're at. Ooh, they took over. Ooh, if you, we might be able to capitulate these guys over here if you, uh... Speed on over, guys. We can increase this by one. Very nice. Uh, how is this? Point 0.9. I love the ground crews. Maybe not. We can't do much over there. R Republican Spain's probably going to fall. It's unfortunate, but probably true. Probably going to fall. Oh, we're trying to make it over here. Oh, an encirclement. Go ahead and give them hell, boys. Oh, don't. Actually, you know what? Do that first, so they can't come in here. Good. Push them back. Push them out. Now hold. Now we shall focus on those two divisions. Uh, at least the French sent some tanks. Very nice. Session de Infanteria Populaire. We get about 0.7 political power a day. And you know what's weird? Oh, besides Portugal having a civil war. 
Charles Curtis. That's really weird to see. It's it's been so long since I've seen that guy's smile in his face. So long. Um, go ahead and take these guys out. Good job, guys. Oh, a little bit of lag. That's okay. You know what? I'm here about destroying enemy divisions, so that's exactly what we're gonna do. I don't know how far along these guys are, but go ahead and help them out. Come on, get down there. Oh, you look good enough to help out. Two more divisions there, and two another division right there. Good job, guys. That's actually really good. Just help them out down here. We'll get these guys all taken care of. Very good. Oh, no! They made... No, no. But we got mass mobilization and army marches on its stomach. Less supply consumption. We get rid of this, we get more stability. That's kind of nice. So, an army marches on its stomach, or at least so the old saying goes. And if we're going to have such a massive force, we're going to need to be able to feed it. The Great Depression has taken a great toll on our farmers, but perhaps if we, you know, funnel some of the military budget into ensuring a steady supply of food, we will be able to ensure our soldiers, and if we are lucky enough, our citizens won't starve any longer. Yes, we ran out of money trying to make more ships for the Navy, or at least to expand it a little bit. But you know what? We currently don't have, we didn't have any money, but somehow we found some more. Ah, uh, very nice. If we can encircle those fellows over there, that would be delightful. Republican Spain, you're not looking too bad. Oh, we've made it down here. Good. Get that other division around here. Um, you're attacking over river, which isn't really not ideal. But, you know what? Do it anyways. Oh, was that another encirclement? Oh, I should have not a never left that. Oh, the Phalangists have kind of come in a little bit. Oh, oh. You guys got... Oh, that's really not good. Oh, my goodness. Let you guys come over here. Um, not bad. Oh wait, no, Keep you keep fighting. Take him out, take him out, take him out, take him out. And then we'll try to rescue these guys down here. And... good. Next up. Oh, this is not looking good. Get down here if we can. We might be able to rescue these guys. We might not. We definitely won't be able to rescue you. Oh, it's paused. No wonder no one's moving. It's paused. Oh, we broke through. Very good. Come down here if you can. That would be great. Oh, they got reencircled. Get supplies in there. Oh, another encirclement. Republican Spain. This is the first time I've ever seen you do really well so far. I mean, then again, we do have air support, so that kind of does help a little bit. Um, I don't want to get encircled. That's kind of suicidal. Let's do that. And let's go back to the Navy. So we got our subs here. You guys are Garbo. That's fine with me. Um, oh, 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 oh no. go. Oh, are you? You're, you're repairing. Okay, that makes sense. 156 naval XP by June 15th, 1936. Pretty darn good. Alright, so we got one of these carriers. We got, make two of those. And we need 12. So that's 9, 10, 11, 12. Good. Ah, the 1936 Progressive National Convention. Cleveland, Ohio. The Progressive National Convention has begun to choose which candidate, Quentin Roosevelt or Alf Landon, which will carry the torch of the party to the national ballot box in November. Roosevelt, who has sworn to continue the social reforms of the late Cousin Teddy, and his VP, Hiram Johnson, to reach not just equality between the sexes, but the races as well. Alf Landon, meanwhile, is more focused on fixing the American economy. Though many of his proposed methods have been considered rather dubious, <clears throat> many progressives are steadfast and their commitment that the resolution, or his resolution, of the unemployment and debt crisis by focusing on small business will save America. Which one of these two will be chosen for the position remains to be seen. Um, let's choose Quentin just because he's not very historical in this camp mod. I mean, he unfortunately passed away too early in our timeline. So let's use him. Four, and let's get up to eight. Nine. Good enough. Good enough. Awesome. Oh, let's let time go on as well. Oh, this is the Asiatic fleet. Well, you're not going to look too Asiatic right now. Um, give me two of you, but throw on a, a heavy cruiser. And then... Oh, wait, what? Can I have... Not, can I not have more? No, I'm not allowed to do that? Oh, hold on. What's going on here? Where are you? Okay. Well, you were weird. Give me one of you guys. Oh, but I put three, so I need like 16. 
And throw in one light cruiser. There you go. Give me that, and then give me that, and then give me that. Heavy cruisers. Good enough. Oh, wait. Is that... That's not good enough. No. Oh. Yes, it is good enough. Yes. Yes, it is. What am I thinking? I'm not. We might need some more screens. There you go. And then... Two... Two battleships. Come on. Can I... Oh, god dang it. They're making me click too many. Oh! That's okay. That's okay. Alright, and... A battleship. And then two heavy cruisers. I need 12 ships. 13 is good enough for me. Two... Ooh. Indianapolis and New Mexico. And throw on one... Oh, I'm out of light cruisers. And we'll make at least one more task force. A little bit of lag, a little bit. Can I have another one? No. Can I have you? No. No, they don't let me s select some of these bad boys. Oh, there's two. And give me... I would like a third one, but whatever. These guys are probably repairing, to be honest with you. Hmm, you know what? Merge these guys. Stop training, everyone. Repair an army marches on its stomach. And we have M2 lights and construction one done. So let's go ahead and do re-equipping our men because we need those rifles. A major issue we will face if we attempt a mobilization on the scale MacArthur plans will be equipping our men. We barely... We barely? <laughs> we already did the food one. We barely have the arms for our current military, let alone a large one. Perhaps we could convince some generous benefactors to supply us. Yes. Ask for the private side of the economy to give us some guns. Stewarts? Sure. And then we shall do research speed. But that's all the time for that we have today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you do, consider leaving a like. A like? A like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. Tomorrow we shall help the Republicans achieve success in Spain with American arms and planes. We shall hopefully see the good old potential <coughs> Here we long. Here we long uh, as president. But regardless, hope you enjoyed the episode, and I hope to see you all tomorrow. Thanks for watching.